Well, dears, welcome back. So you have started watching videos on genetic algorithm. And in this lecture, I am going to convince you through schema theory why genetic algorithm works. It is not all heuristics. So stay tuned. So in that context, you already know what, what is a schema. Schema is a, uh, say, chromosome having some defining bit and some uh, undefined bits, right? So these undefined bits determine the instances of a schema. So if this is the schema, then the instances will be, since there are two undefined bits, so two square, uh, there will be three, uh, there will be four, two square is four uh, instances of the schema, like one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero. So this undefined bit can take uh, this uh, position, right? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So this is basically a generalized representation or compact representation of chromosomes. Otherwise, you see, with one schema, just putting these two, I could uh, represent one, two, three, four chromosomes, right? So this is the advantage. In a generalized way, we are trying to understand uh, how chromosome will behave generation after generation, right? So on the other hand, you see, if you have uh, a schema like this, so one, two, three, undefined bit. So there'll be eight instances, right? So what are those? Zero, zero, zero. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So, so this is 0, 0, 0, 1. Huh? Mm. OK, 1, 0, 1, 0. Huh? So this is 1, 1. Mm. Sorry, this is 1, 1. And then you flip this one. Huh? So 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 instances of this uh, schema where there are 3, 1, 2, 3, 3 bits, right? So you understand what are the instances and what are the schema. And then we have uh, introduced you with the concept of Defining length, which is very important concept. Defining length is actually the distance between outermost defining bit. So in the schema, you have defined bit, undefined bit. So this is a schema where you have defined bit. These are the defined bit. So it's a uh, outermost, the distance between outermost defining bit. So what is the distance here between this outermost uh, defining bit? One distance, two. 3, 3 unit, right? So defining length is 3. And here, what is the defining length? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because my defining bit, outermost defining bit is 0, and is this 0. And the distance between them is the uh, defining length. Similarly, in this schema, my defining bit, this and this, and uh, defining length will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is important to know okay, uh, that what is defining length. And because crossover will take place and whether a particular schema will survive or not, that will depend on the defining length. Okay, So you see the note. Then what is the order of a schema? Order is actually... Uh, defined by the number of fixed position. So here, you see, if this is a schema, you have certain positions which are fixed. The bit position, defining bit positions are fixed. This, 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 they are fixed. Only these are not fixed, right? So what is the order? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So order is denoted by n, and here, for this particular um, uh, schema, the order is n equal to 5. Here, likewise, the order is 2, like that. Okay. 
So these are very useful things which we are going to utilize in my next uh, lec uh, lecture on schema theory. So what is the theory? The, we would like to know in terms of schema that which schema is going to survive in the next generation, generation after generation. You know, normally uh, 600, 700, 1000 generations uh, or epoch we iterate, right, in genetic algorithm. So it is important to know or predict that what are the schema um, which are going to survive. So let us assume that at least one instance of the schema H is present in the IC generation. And let also M sub H I be the number of instances of the schema H in the generation I and F cap H I be the average fitness of these instances. Right? So if you have uh, instances of the schema, so you have a fitness function, so you put all the instances in the fitness function and then you get some fitness value and uh, from there uh, if you suppose a particular um, schema has uh, three instances, right? And one instance has value, fitness value 20, so one has um, 20, another one has 15, another one has 30. So what will be uh, F cap H I? So you add all these three average fitness value divided by 3. Okay, so 3 plus 15 plus 30 divided by 3, that will be the value, the average fitness value of these instances. Okay, so this is how you can calculate the instances. Huh? Uh, <laughs> you can calculate the um, uh, fitness, um, average fitness of the instances, right? Now we want to calculate the number of instances in the next generation. So if MH i is i generation number of instances of a schema H, then M sub H i plus 1 is the number of uh, instances of the schema H in the next generation, right? Now see how to calculate. Now what will be the expected number of offspring of a chromosome X in the next generation, just I am writing in a generalized way, okay. Uh, you have a chromosome X and what is the expected number of offspring of a chromosome X? Hence, you see, the probability of reproduction is proportional to the chromosome fitness, right? So, expected number of offspring in the next generation is equals to the fitness of the chromosome X divided by the average fitness of the chromosome in the initial generation i, right? So in that same generation, uh, what is the value? If it is mm, more than one, then you are going to see. If it is less than one, you are not going to see it, okay? So this is how the number will be calculated, right? So fitness of the chromosome x divided by the average fitness of the chromosome in the um, initial generation i. So you have understood, right? Say you have 36, 30, 31, 35, all these instances of the, uh, of the chromosome. And then you have uh, this, you are calculating this plus this plus this plus this divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. Total plus divided by 4, which you are getting this. And then number will be, uh, say, this one, 36 divided by whatever value you are getting, right? So that's how you actually calculate the number of uh, expected number of offspring in the next generation. So assuming the chromosome X is an instance of schema H, now I can write, so M sub H I plus 1 would be equals to all the instances, uh, X is the instance of the schema H, so all the instances of the schema H summation, the fitness values, the summation of all the fitness values of all the instances of the schema divided by the total, uh, uh, the, the average fitness value of all the chromosomes in the i uh, uh, generation, where x belongs to, uh, so the x is an instance of the schema h, right? 
So since by definition, now we have defined, right, um, the m sub h i is equals to uh, summation of f x i, i equals, uh, where uh, x equals to actually, x equals to, sorry about that, x equals to 1 to m sub h, okay, total number, divided by uh, f h cap, the total, uh, the average fitness of the uh, total um, schema, okay. So, this is the definition, right, it's a number, huh? so basically all the instances, what is the fitness value divided by the average uh, fitness value of the entire um, uh, schema. Okay. From here, you can take it here and we are getting this divided by, so we just for convenience we are taking this. So from 2 and 3, what we can write, so what will be the number of um, uh, instances of a schema in the next generation? It will be equals to, from here, f cap h i divided by f cap i times m sub i, sub m sub h i, okay. So, that is simply telling the schema with above average fitness will indeed tend to appear more frequently in the next generation, okay. So, if this is uh, more than average, okay, then it will be the fraction will be more than 1, okay, if this is bigger than this, fraction will be more than 1, and then the, this will actually, um, indeed, will tend to appear more frequently hmm, in the next generation, right. So, this will be multiplied by a factor which is bigger than 1, huh? so that is what it is telling. That is wonderful, right, so it tells you that um, when we actually run um, we, uh, there is struggle for existence and we everything, every decision crossover mutation uh, is guided by fitness value, then that is what it happens, right? That above average uh, schema with above average fitness will try to survive, okay, uh, more frequently in the next generation. Okay, so that schema will survive. Now, how about, this is good, but well, how about the effect crossover and mutation on the survival of a schema. We will now need to just uh, a little bit, um, uh, this is very, very uh, intuitive, you see. Probability a schema H will survive after crossover can be, uh, after crossover can be defined as, so probability P sub H, okay, uh, this is crossover, crossover probability that is equals to 1 minus Pc times Ld divided by L minus 1, where Ld is the defining length of a schema divided by total length of a schema, okay. So that is why I was telling that if the defining length, if the defining length of a schema So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, say here is also is a 8 bit, 8 bit chromosome, having only defined, so this outermost uh, defined bit length is 1, so uh, if the defining length is 1 and total length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right, 7 minus 7, so 1 by 6 times this is a probability value 0 0.7 normally we take. So, fraction multiplied by another fraction, this term becomes uh, more smaller. So, probability of survival, crossover survival uh, becomes high, 1 minus a very small value, right? Uh, so, that is actually what intuitively you can see that why smaller defining length is appreciated for the, is good for the survival of a schema. Right. So, this is the formula, intuitive formula. Is it clear? 
is the defining length of a schema. So we are rewriting uh, the same equation, right? Um, what does equation 5 indicate? As I told you, those schema with small defining length has higher probability to survive in the next generation because this term will be smaller and smaller. So 1 minus small, that is probability will be high, right? Okay, that's okay. Now, what is the probability of a schema will survive after mutation? As you know, in a, in a organic evolution, the after mutation, the species normally die. It's called genetic change. When people say uh, in biology, I don't know, okay, that the cancer also uh, is produced by genetic change, right? <coughs> so normally species does not survive. Here also, uh, survival rate of a schema after um, mutation, uh, what is that? We are going to just uh, define here. How is the probability of a schema will survive after mutation? Say, small p sub m be the mutation probability for any bit of a schema h and let n be its order. You already know what is order. Huh? This is order. Huh? The order of a schema is given as the number of fixed positions. So then, 1 minus small p sub m is the probability that the bit will not be mutated. So that's the probability that schema h will survive after mutation is equals to 1 minus small p sub m to the power n. So intuitively again this is defined like this. You see if you uh, is the order of a schema is high, right? And uh, so this is fraction, right? Probability value is 0, 0, 1, and this is normally. So 1 minus this is a fraction. So fraction to the power some value, this is good or this is good. Earlier one is good, right? That probability uh, because uh, you see 0.9 into 0 0.81 and 0 0.9 into 0.9 into 0.9. So more you do that, more you increase the number of n, the probability will decrease, huh? simply. So it is not good to have a schema which has um, order, very high order, right? So this is actually good and this is, this is not good. Um, this is not this is not actually uh, good so you see the order of the schema if it is smaller so what is uh, what is the actually take home if i now combine 4 5 and 6 4 5 and 6 you know if you combine so it was very simple simply defined that what are going to survive and now, this is what is going to survive 4, 5, and 6. That uh, this is schema theorem, which gives the lower bound of the number of instances of a schema H in the next generation. So, what is the take home? Low order, shorter length schema will give exponentially increasing or decreasing number of samples generation after generation, depending on the schema's average fitness value. If the schema's average fitness value is high, then that schema is going to produce the sch which schema which has low order, shorter length. So that schema will produce more and more offspring in the generations to come. So that's which is desirable and that's the great thing, right? A, a schema theory is telling that what you are doing basis on the basis of fitness value is not heuristic, right? It has a theory, okay, which is based on intuition that if you follow that, then generation after generation, your, um, the, uh, the, the search will be um, cleaner and cleaner. You will go to the uh, optimum values. 
so i think with this um, so you have understood this schema theory right uh, that which uh, which schema is good and which schema is going to survive all kind of thing you now know and that is the theory actually behind what you are doing uh, this what you are doing in the genetic algorithm uh, the other day we have shown uh, the uh, roulette wheel and all kind of thing right now we will do a number of case studies Eh? So in the class uh, assignments, so you see this is a typical function of several variable x and y. So you have x. So it's a very ugly kind of function, right? <laughs> Optimizing this is very difficult. So see the parameter x can take values minus three and so this is constraint minus three and plus three. Uh, okay, then first step is how to encode them. Okay, so you are uh, encoding so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So uh, you decided that two eight-bit chromosome one for X, another from for Y. I will take. So this is the chromosome may look like. So encoding is very very important. You know, encoding is very very important. So this one case study will do how to encode um, a particular problem, and then another problem which we'll study actually is. Uh, case study will do that is maintenance scheduling of a power plant okay uh, suppose a power plant has a number of units which is supplying electricity uninterrupted and those units actually require maintenance and for that you cannot shut down uh, all the plants right so in a particular sequence you will have to do that so that your optimal uh, production of power from the power plant uh, remains optimal means maximum so that there will be no uh, power cut in your area and this kind of problem is very difficult to solve it's an optimization problem there is problem are complex and difficult to solve because they are empty complete uh, problem uh, and they cannot be solved by combinatorial such technique so what we do such problem we use genetic algorithm which is a stochastic search technique and this particularly these two um, we will do in our class as an assignment so that you will digest all the concepts which you have learned in the genetic algorithm and the theory schema theory behind it you have also learned that why ga works and after knowing that the, these two assignments will help you to digest the concept of genetic algorithm with this i conclude uh, genetic algorithm lectures and uh, this I will try to also make a video and give you, uh, but in the class we will do these two assignments. But the two assignments you can uh, just do, okay. So this is a scheduling problem. There are seven units, four equal intervals, okay. So these are um, four equal uh, intervals are the maximum load expected during four intervals are 80, 90, 65 and 70 megawatt of power. So this is the... Uh, <coughs> maximum loads expected maintenance of any unit starts at the beginning of an interval and finishes at the end of the same or adjacent interval okay so the maintenance cannot be averted or finished earlier than the schedule right so should you know seven units are there four equal interval you are you have divided so that your um, expected load will be satisfied right the net reserve of the power uh, system must be bigger or equal to zero at any interval. So the optimal criteria is the maximum of the net reserve, net reserve at any maintenance period, so that power cut problem can be minimized. So this is a complicated problem and can be easily solved by genetic algorithm. So this in the class we'll do, and afterwards we can um, upload the videos as well. But they are not um, means mandatory for you to know about genetic algorithm. So, with this, uh, I will I will stop here, and all these lectures will actually help you to understand the basic genetic algorithm. But you see, uh, implementing genetic algorithm is not so easy because um, codification of a problem. Modifying a problem requires a lot of expertise, 
then what kind of fitness function you are going to use because that's very important right that is very uh, useful concept that what kind of fitness value you should uh, fitness function you should design show that because it is only the fitness function where the chromosomes are being tested and all the algorithm is running right so these are the story which are very important and uh, to know uh, that uh, indiscriminately heuristically okay this is good so there is a function and then i run that function on my problem which can be solved by other method optimization method should not be solved by genetic algorithm method problem like this yes incomplete problem or um, this kind of ugly kind of ugly optimization problem it could be many other uh, variables x y z okay uh, so um, function of several variable how to optimize they are challenging actually there you can use genetic algorithm but very carefully you will have to codify the problem uh, correctly to get good uh, results So have a nice day and stay safe. Bye-bye.